Cool. So I'm going to show some um, setup of how to integrate Sentry with our Tanuki Inc project, which was created as a way of um, easily generating um, realistic production data or production like data. And right now it's set up to generate errors when you click um, a button and those errors get sent to Sentry. So yeah, we'll see how we can integrate this with a, um, a dev setup so you can easily test uh, error tracking features. So I'll share my screen. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at this Tanuki Inc. project. So this is on gitlab.com. Um, the setup that I'm going to show here could also be applied to a local GDK, um, which is probably what you would want to do if you're doing development on error tracking. Um, yeah, so in, in GitLab, we have this operation setting tab, settings tab. You need maintainer access to see this, um, so it's worth knowing. Um, so if you don't see that, then request maintainer or above access to the project that you're trying to set up. Um, this error tracking tab shows um, is where you can integrate um, with an ex existing Sentry instance. And then once that's done, you'll be able to see errors in the GitLab error tracking page. Um, the project that we are integrating with has a front end here. Um, it's, uh, it's using GitLab Auto DevOps running on a GitLab managed Kubernetes cluster. So it's pretty easy to set up something like this. Um, it just involves like some Docker scripts to build it and um, some code to run for the front end. And the way it's set up is when we click this button, um, it will generate an error to Sentry. I believe it actually you may tell us in the console when it happens. No, it doesn't. But you can see in the network tab that it's firing off some requests to Sentry. Um, we can view these errors in Sentry. Oh no, these, this is actually going to the GitLab page. Um, so this is not configured yet, um, but at the end we should be able to go to this page and, and see everything. So this is the um, the Sentry view of this project. Uh, this is something that would, if you can't see this URL, it's at the GitLab uh, like production instance of Sentry, um, which holds both prod projects and like test projects. This is more of a test project. Um, if you don't have access to see this, then that's something that you'll need to request. Um, and yeah, so anyway, for now you can see this error was triggered a few seconds ago. That was from me clicking that button. Um, Quick question just for yeah, the recording. Sure. Uh, who should people um, ask for access? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. There's, um, there's an IT ops channel okay. that where people provide access um, to stuff. I believe there are a number of admins on Sentry. So um, if you ping the right person, then they'll add you. Because this is not a production thing, I don't know that you need to go through like a formal access request, but yeah. that may also change. Um, but yeah, I would start with uh, pinging on Slack in one of the generic uh, like IT ops channels. Um, there is also a Sentry channel that you could try. Um, mm, so the, yeah. there's, that's probably where all the admins um, are, are sitting. Um, yeah, so the Sentry instance um, is receiving errors, so that's all good. Now we want these errors to be visible in um, GitLab. So that's this error tracking section. So what I've done is um, I've just cleared the previous setup. I had a token set up for this, but I've um, 
deleted that token just for the purposes of this demo. So we can add a new one. Um, Sentry.getlab.net is the API URL. You can also do this locally if you have your own local instance, just chuck in the base URL. Um, then the second step is to create an auth token. Um, so that's through this create auth token button. Um, as far as I know, this is this is the correct set of permissions, but um, I haven't completely explored this to see if all of these are required. But um, we want to share a bunch. Like Sentry needs to share a whole bunch of information with um, with GitLab. So you definitely need read like most of the read options. Needs to be able to read the org. Um, definitely needs to be able to read events, project, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, event admin, I'm not sure if that's required, but um, yeah, that's something I'll probably do a bit of research on after this. Um, for now, let's create the token and we'll see if this, if we have the right permissions and whether this works. So here's a token. We'll pop this into the operation settings UI, run connect, and yes, we can see, we can view projects, so, and we can view the org, so it's, it's giving us this option in the drop down. We'll make sure it's active, and then save the changes. So now the error page should work. And we'll see if this this works. So it's currently doing a search, and yep, that looks like that was the right um, set of permissions. Um, so now we can drill into these in more detail if we like. Um, I'll just show a couple of examples of things that might be interesting. So in Sentry, you can see there's a this GL-5 that, that's saying that it's linked to an issue in GitLab. Um, you can see this in more detail um, here, uh, somewhere, oh yeah, no wait, that's not the issue, but here it is, just this little um, subtle link here. Uh, if we go to another um, another issue, you can see one that's not linked, you can see how to link them. Um, so that's this button here. So that this is just like a feature that you might want to test. Um, and yeah, the way you, you get that link is with this button. Um, there's a couple of ways to integrate with GitLab, but I think either way it results in the same drop down. Um, and then we can see what that looks like in the GitLab error detail page. So it's this type error cannot read property filter of undefined. This one here looks like the right one. And we can see it's got a link to the GitLab issue, so that worked. Um, whoops. Um, other things that might be worth knowing, so there's ignore resolve. Um, these cause, if I go and ignore one, whoops. Um, this will cause it to disappear from the list. I believe. Um, so that might be worth knowing. Like if you're if you're looking for an issue and you can't see it, then it might be because it's ignored or resolved. Um, and by default, the filter in um, Sentry uh, assumes that you're only after issues that are unresolved. So you need to remove that to see everything. Um, yeah, I think that's that's everything. And after this, I'll probably reset this token. Um, but yeah, feel free to, if, if you get access to um, this project, you can set up your own token. And as long as you can access Tanuki Inc, then you can configure that in your own GDK with your own token. So this, this will not be needed for you. Cool. cool. Um, so question, if you could sure. 
So, and I guess because I was having this issue, if you click ignore, um, mm. do you, what kind of permissions do you, so, and I don't know if this uh -huh. is resolved or not. Yeah, that's a good but, yeah. question. Because I, I think I was able to click ignore on actual Sentry, but then when I was on my local, I wasn't. And I think there was like a weird thing. So maybe it was like one of these that I yeah. had it wrong. If I was to guess, I would say that that's event admin. Um, but there is no event right, um, so either you can you can do everything to an event or just read them or nothing. Um, I don't think it should use those, but let's test that out. Um, so we'll go back to the list, or we could do it within here. But let's try out these nice buttons here. Um, so let's try ignoring that. A little bit, we need a loading state. Let's go in and see if that worked. Hmm, interesting. The ignore is still there, so it seems that maybe it didn't work. So, and I'll try it. Yeah, I'll and I'm a bunch of... Oh, no, this is. Yeah. Oh, that's a reaction. This has been ignored. Pushing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. that's some behavior that. We might need to fix. That's fine. Yes, I think. Yeah, I think this is mm. um, this is the reacting caching bit that we were. I think um, Sean was working on. Yeah, uh, I did see Because yeah, I think this goes raised. away after like five minutes. Yeah. Okay, but um, to answer the original question, it looks like these permissions are enough to um, ignore something, and the only thing that's not. Um, a read access or like the ability to do a release was admin event admin so i'd say that's the key one that, that you were missing okay um so. let's see if we can resolve as well oh ah, yeah that disappeared from the list and this is probably going to be resolved now mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, okay, so if you resolve it, unignores it, and just resolves it. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, any other questions? Um, no, I think I just needed to like fit in the pieces with the axis and stuff, and I was yep. wondering why the production thing was happening. Yep. Um, so this is really good, um, and I hope that this will be useful also to the people. I think the axes are what really got me at first, so... Um, yep. Cool. Yeah, yeah awesome. sounds good. So I guess cool. the key the key reason for using Tanuki Inc. is just that it has this nice error generation. Yeah. Um, everything else you could set up locally quite easily, but you would have a you would have like a local sentry that didn't have much in it. Um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty much why I wanted to use this. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, the other thing I just sort of worth mentioning is this Tanuki mm -hmm. Inc. is used for demos to um to like people outside of the company occasionally so um like that was kind of the original purpose mm -hmm. so it's worth knowing like just don't don't mess with the instance too much like to yeah. the point where it's disconnected from like we should make sure that it's always connected to this project for instance but yeah. we can totally add as many um errors or, or modify as many errors as we want, that's fine. Just as long as we, um, like the, the demo instance is still working. Awesome, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. cool. Sweet. Awesome, thank you so much. No worries.